He's smarting over there on the opposite side of the floor. Good defense by Kyrie. Oh, wow! My, oh, Butter my, oh, my. by James! T7M Radio brings to you the best of seven sports talk with seven. Mitchell. In the association with the Boston Celtics. Now, Sunday after a semi-impressive comeback, some would say, uh, attempt at least, Kyrie and the Celtics fell flat to the Houston Rockets, 115-104 to 104 at TD Gardens. When interviewed in the postgame, Kyrie had responded to a lot of the media questions, KB, with four words, just got to play better. In the preseason, we know that the Celtics were a favorite coming out of the East. At least I, I felt like they were probably the favorite to come out of the East and make it to the finals. I know it's six weeks left. We still got 18 games left to play until the playoffs. Boston right now is sitting in the fifth seed. But what's the problem? What do you see as far as the issues that the Celtics is having? Cat Reeves messing up the team chemistry. You know, they had a thing going when he wasn't there. Then you notice. When Kyrie missed five games when he was injured, the Celtics won all five of them games. They went to game and seven Kyrie. of the Eastern Conference Finals with, without Kyrie last year. Yeah. And then Kyrie doesn't like the fact that Jason Tatum is getting I mean, un, unfair, kind of, because Tatum, he balled last year, but he hasn't came all the way into – Shot opportunities that he normally wouldn't get as a second year player because of how he played last year in the playoffs. Who, getting a little, you know, Brad Stevens a little more generous with giving him the ball and the offense more. Talking about Jason Tatum. Okay. And Kyrie don't like that. When Kyrie's supposed to, you know, everything fell apart from what Kyrie thought it was going to be from the jump. The, the five minutes into his first season with Boston when Hayward broke broke, broke his leg right that's right so you know that's where it, it kind of started from there and Kyrie was still trying to make good on what he said but you know everything he thought was going to happen it didn't happen the way he wanted it you, you know because this year you know we was expecting them to make a serious run and actually even beat the Warriors uh, I thought the Celtics had a chance to beat. It was like if anybody could beat the Warriors, it would have been a complete Boston team. Well, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to feel. I'm not going to say I felt like they would have beat the Warriors. I do agree that, you know, Boston again were favorite. You know, going into training camp to be the best team coming out of the East, especially since LeBron took his talents to the Western Conference. Now, to me, it's blamed to go around everywhere when we look at the Boston Celtics. Of course, we got to start at the top with Kyrie because he's supposed to be the leader. But, you know, there's blame truly to go all around. The Celtics as a team have been up and down KB all year. You know, they got wins versus Milwaukee. Oh, of course. They got wins versus Toronto. They got wins versus Milwaukee and Philly. But then they turn around and got losses versus teams like the Knicks, the Suns, and the Bulls. It's like a mirror image of what we're seeing out in L.A. with the Lakers. Yeah, man. Nah, I think the Celtics are a little bit better off than the Lakers, though. I ain't going to lie to you. Now, but, you know, it's a lot of people, like, they playing like they gunning for individual goals or something. Or like they trying to show up Kyrie win. Because, all right, this is, you know where this started from? It started from in after games when they if they lose, Kyrie it thinks he's doing what LeBron was doing to them. He's talking bad about them, trying to get them, you know, thinking they're going to play better the next game. They, they hear in these interviews, they like, hold on, dude, you was out there playing too. So, you know, they, they're not really with the passing the buck around, especially when Kyrie hasn't done nothing since he left LeBron James. He, he thought he was going to do. Even and still, he's still a great player. Even still, you know, because him and LeBron does take the same approach in post game interviews. I, you know, what they're saying though are facts. I think people got a problem of, of the who the messenger is, who's actually saying it. But what LeBron and Kyrie are saying is, when it is comes all to like facts. Family and friends, do we really owe them? Do you like? Can I tell y'all my take on this shit? I'd be like, yo, I don't owe nobody shit. How, how many? Who you gonna please? Of course. I, I tell you. people if you give your cousin ten thousand. Uh, you, you get what you gonna get your aunt? You gonna get your aunt twenty because she babysitted you. Then what you gonna get your grandma? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Unlike Milwaukee, unlike Toronto, and unlike Philly, the Boston Celtics have not had to adjust to any type of team altering trades this year. As a matter of fact, 
this team that we're seeing right well, there's now. There's nothing that can defend these bad shots that Kyrie is taking. Look at the horrible. Look at the horrible shots that Kyrie is taking. But this is the same Sometimes team that we had from the, the training office, camp. But hold up, KB. This is the same team that we had from training camp. Where lies the problem when it comes to chemistry? Yeah, they could have adjust that by adjusting a few egos out the door at the trade deadline and still tried to keep the main goal and kept the ship going, but they ain't do that. Just like. I don't know. I don't know. Max Kellerman was tripping the other day, talking about they should have traded Kyrie. I think they, you know, should have adjusted the team a little more since the way he feels. Like you know, he feel like you know, get somebody in there to play defense more in there. Get somebody that'll take you know, take a little less shots and still get the buckets. But the Celtics ain't do that. They believe and Brad Stevens that he'll get it done and turn it around. He just ain't got it done yet. Is Kyrie Irving not the best player on this team? Mm. You have to think about that? He is. He is, but there is Kyrie, no buts. Like there I is said, no buts, KB. Kyrie is the best hands well, down so player. Many, he's the best, but he's not available all the time. Of course he's the best. Boston, nobody beat Kyrie one-on-one on that team. Boston, so, Boston, Yeah. I just, you know, I feel like, when it comes to coaching, I don't feel like their coaching has been up to par as it has been in the past. There's a lot of blame to go around. Now, they're only a game and a half behind Philly for the fourth seed. Do you think that they can move up in the rankings before, the, before it's over with? Right now, they're in the fifth. But they can move up to the fourth, you know, over Philly. And I think that's going to be key because I, I believe those two will be seeing each other in the yeah, first round. Yeah, they got to get a top four spot. Yeah. They got to. They, they got to get a top four for spot. For home court. You think they're going to pull it noise, off? Yeah. Are they going to pull it off? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, I think so. I think they'll get it together. And let me let me change my answer to that. Kyrie is the best player, but I think they're circling their future and banking on the development of Jason Tatum. I'm going to tell you that instead because Kyrie know they're not banking on him for their future. But we seen how Jason Tatum gives it up last year. He was making major noise and then was working with Kobe in the offseason. So I, I, I'm kind of shell-shocked to, to see how some of these guys are not really uh, meeting the expectation. Maybe maybe the the bar was raised too high for the Boston Celtics. Look at Jalen Brown, uh, Marcus Smart. I mean, these guys, I don't know why they looking so bad with someone like Kyrie, a proven winner, a proven champion. The media loves gassing it up. As soon as they beat the Bucks in the first round, oh my God! Wait till Kyrie come back. Wait till Gordon Hayward come back. They're gonna be championship contenders. As soon as they, as soon as they beat the Bucks, that's where all this started from. Right now, they're thirty-eight and twenty-six. They sitting at a fifth seed, a game and a half behind the seventy-sixes. Um, they coming off of that. They just looked horrible at Houston. They did a little good comeback, but Jo, what do you see as a problem for Boston? The problem is it's a lot of guys, young guys on their team that haven't matured, and they're not under under the uh, understanding that Kyrie can lead them to greater places because they already got a taste of uh, success when they made it to the conference finals. So a lot of guys refusing to take a little step back, as in Rozier and Jalen Brown. So I think Kyrie is kind of the center of what's what's going on, what I think is unfair to Kyrie. I think it's just a lot a lot of young guys not accepting to it. Now, right now, J.O., KB and I are probably giving Kyrie 50% maybe of the blame. Is that too much to give Kyrie? That's entirely too much. Wow. Um, I, I mean, I don't think he's the reason they're losing, like, far as, what he's doing on the court. Now, what he's doing off the court, we can. I mean, you might can argue it's fifty percent because he. It's just the attitude on the court, and everybody on the team know he's probably going to leave. So, you playing with a guy that's not committed to you and is probably going to leave you after the season, you're not going to play. You're not going to play hard with him or for him. Hmm. What about you, KB? You think Kyrie making a move next year, or do you think he's going to stay in Boston? I think he's sabotaging his way out there the way he is dogging the, his teammates out all the time. I think he, from the jump, when he feel, realized everything was about to fizzle out and wasn't about to be what he thought it was going to be, he was ready to check out. So you got Kyrie leaving. Kyrie, 
he said that. Remember, he said he said, "See me June first. I'm gonna do what's best for me." I mean, July first. You heard him say he already said it. That's on record. Yeah, but it was also on record that he said in front of uh, uh, thousands of people in in TD in in the TD Garden that he said he would be for them. He would love to stay in Boston if they would have him. So Kyrie is back and forth with this. Man, you know, for the ball players love to lie to the people, man. This is keeps it the good faith. You know, he ain't won the booze all season. You know, that's all it was. He was trying to avoid the booze all season. What about you, J.O.? Is Kyrie leaving Boston at the end of the year? He must certainly leave. And only only thing that could keep him there unless they bring it all together and win a championship. And I don't see that coming. So, he, it's a definite it's a definite leave. You know, it just you know, not to get off topic, but uh, staying on topic, uh, Kyrie, is, it seems as if he's having the same thing that LeBron is going through. Like he learned from LeBron as far as in a bad way. Uh, you see how LeBron is doing with the Lakers, and you see Co- I mean, uh, Kyrie doing with the Celtics. It's like, I-, I hate that he got that gene from LeBron. It seems like that's what's going on. I get what you're saying. I feel like he need LeBron. I don't, you know, Kyrie is a clutch person, but I don't see him well, being, being that a little leader. disrespectful now. Why? What? what, what? You saying he need LeBron? Okay, that's we, a, Kyrie has had a I nice sample like he size. Do, He's had like a nice sample LeBron size too. without LeBron. For you to say that Kyrie going to hold his own team, he was young with Cleveland, but he's he's been with Boston for a couple years. He had Cleveland by himself. He's not that guy that's going to get it done by himself. He really does need LeBron. Yeah, I, I, I believe he's, he's a piece. He guy. can't be the man. He's just a piece. Wait and a minute. So I, LeBron ever done it by himself? He's not going. I mean, well, I was getting ready to say. To go way off topic. No, I was getting ready to say, Jo. I, mean, I, I will. Help. I will say that LeBron needs Kyrie just as much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you need you need another guy on the squad. I mean, you need another guy that's going to be side by side with you. You know, in the trenches. And, I mean, they thought Jason Tatum would be an all-star level this year. I think they kind of jumped the gun with that. And it definitely the Gordon, let me tell you the, a major factor, the Gordon Hay- Hayward factor, because he hasn't been the same. He's been taking Jalen Brown minutes as well. And so it's just a host of things. Well, we're going to leave and this the up. Celtics got to eat that contract. Woo. That's a lot of money they got under Five Gordon years. Haywood. That's that's right. That's right. Well, we're gonna let the people decide, man. Y'all let us know in the comment section what y'all think about Kyrie, the Celtics, and their woes, man. What went wrong? What's going wrong? And what can the Celtics do to turn things around? About eighteen games left in the season, man. We're gonna have to see, man. This is the best of seven sports talk. T seven on radio, man. We're gonna stay in the association, the NBA. I want to talk about NBA Rookie of the Year, man. The Rookie of the Year race. Getting kind of tight, fellas. We got five young guys that's kind of stood out. Trey Young from the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Luka Donix, of course, from the Dallas Mavericks. We got Marvin Bagley, Sacramento Kings. DeAndre Ayton, the number one pick from out Phoenix. And John Jackson Jr. out there with the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, KB, I'm going to start off with you. Who do you see right now as being the NBA Rookie of the Year if it stopped today, if the season ended today? Shit, the NBA be playing Marvin Bagley out. Shit, I ain't seen Marvin the Bagley word. play since Duke. <laughs> Sacramento don't be on TV. I think so I, I'm, I'm all, I, I think I that. seen like I think I seen like one game Marvin Bagley played in this year when they played the Kings play Phoenix on TV. But I ain't seen Marvin Bagley play that much this year. I know he got good stats, but. I just, I've yet to really see him play in the NBA. I seen him in the rookie game. He he, he died in the rookie game, you know. But as far as the ones that's really standing out, the only two that's really been the, the you know the big topic of discussion is Luca or Trey Trey Young. Trey Young showing out because a lot of people play like you know in the preseason and summer league they was playing him out talking about oh he was gonna be a bust, oh he wasn't gonna be good and all that stuff. Now give it a little time. Now Trey Young is doing his thing, so you know they counted him out way too early. Especially the way he was balling in Oklahoma, I don't know what they was thinking about. Like he wasn't going to do his thing in the league. 
Trey just dropped 49 Friday, but he he struggles with defense and and consistency. He struggles with those two things. Um, you know, I probably would have to go with Trey Young probably being a rookie of the year. I mean, he when it comes to shooting, I mean he looked like a little Trey, a little Steph Curry out there. He pulling that thing from 30, 35 feet with no problem. Yeah, but I got Luka Doncic as rookie of the year though, because Luka Doncic is playing like he never he been in the NBA for years. And he's only he just turned twenty years old like a few days ago. He's balling and he got a big future in the league, especially with the Mavericks. He's gonna stay paid because he's playing with Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban gonna ride him out. He 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 got guaranteed re up contracts all the time. He just got KP as his teammate. Like you know, Trey Young don't know what the Atlanta Hawks is going or doing. The only good teammate he has is John Collins. He don't have no other teammates as. Vince Carter old, and I don't I don't even know why Vince Vince Carter keep getting them checks, brother. But I don't know why you still in the league. But you know, that's about it, man. Like, Trey Young don't really have nothing to work with. He has a more Luka Doncic has more of a certain future in the NBA, and what like you know he already got it planned out about you know what he about to do. He about to take over this thing for Dirk, and he got KP ride with him in you know in the future. Trey Young, I don't, I don't see nobody coming to Atlanta no time soon, unless you know they couldn't even start filling the seats up having rappers perform at halftime every game. They still couldn't fill out every game. Luca is official. You know, I'm not I, gonna lie, Luca is official. He averaging just under 21 points, uh, seven rebounds, and about six assists, shooting about 43 percent from the floor. He's not your ordinary rookie, but you know he has definitely a little bit more help in Dallas than Trey Young has in Atlanta. That's why I kind of, um, as Trey Young, of getting the rookie of the year. Um, what about you, J.O.? Not who? even to mention he got Tim Hardaway Jr. too. That's a fact. What about you, J.O.? Who who you looking at as possible rookie of the year this year in the NBA? Well, it's, we still have, uh, what, 15 to 21 games left. But if it stopped now, I will have to give it to Luka. But Trey Young is coming on strong, and Bagley was definitely coming on strong before he hurt his knee uh, last week. Right. He'd be out a couple of weeks. Um, Luca, from start to finish, has has been the most consistent. Uh, I thought he could have got some consideration of being an All Star player. Um, he's big internationally. Um, teams are not that well. You know, he's a rookie, so you can't expect a rookie to lead a, a team to a playoff of, of some sort. But uh, Trey Young, I was one of the guys that thought he was going to be trash, a uh, bust. I thought um, he he definitely surprised me. But I shouldn't be because in this in today's game, you don't have to be crazy athletically and you just shoot 23s a game, you know, get your numbers. Right. So uh, I, I definitely got to respect him. But Bagley, I mean, being a, a Duke fan, I mean, he, he, he's been great. And Aiden actually started the season off as it looked like he was going to be the uh, eight, year first month. DeAndre is averaging a double-double right now. Yeah, quietly. Yeah, on the low. On the low ski out of Phoenix. But, but they just, their Phoenix record is just terrible. Man, Phoenix cooking up the watch. In a few years, Phoenix, they got Devin Booker out there, too. De- Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden going to make some noise. He ain't got to get it. Yeah, they got to surround them. They got to surround them, too. Team. That's why he can't get his numbers. Look out for Booker John Jackson Jr. They got a lot of gunners. You know, he, he got hurt, but, you know, if he's able to bounce back, you know, for Memphis, he was balling out before he got hurt. <laughs> Yeah, Jaron Jackson Jr. was balling for Memphis. He was averaging just under 14. He was shooting about 50%, 35 from from three. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus Gasol got traded, so it's on him now. Yep. Yeah, he got to hold it down now. He ain't no hiding behind Gasol. Well, that's going to be interesting when we're going to let the people decide um, who they think should be the rookie of the year. But, again, I said I'm going with Trey Young. KB, you said you're going with Luca. Mm-hmm. J.O., you said Luca. Luca's going to have them boys in the playoffs next year. Mm, talk about it. Yeah, I got, I got Luca, but it's going to be it. It's not. It's going. It's going to be tight. 
finishing at the finish line between him and Trey. Because Trey Young is kind of the lead. ESPN is like checking for all his games now. So go get Trey dope. Young some help. You need to put a hashtag out there. Get Trey help. Ha! Huh, we should do that. That's facts. Trey way. Trey way. Trey way. I like that. <laughs> T7 L Radio, man, this is the best of seven sports talk. Seven Mitchell, KB, J-O in the building. Before we get out of here, man, let's take this thing to the ring. Let's get into some boxing. May the 4th, T-Mobile Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, man. We got the middleweight division unification match. We got Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Daniel Jacobs. Now, uh, Canelo, this is his second fight off of his record five-year, 11-fight, $365 million deal. Um, with Dazzin, who also signed Jacobs. Jacobs is looking to earn about $15 million for this um, unification fight versus Canelo. Uh, it's going to be a good fight. KB, do you got a, a early predicted winner for May 4th between Canelo and Jacobs? Yeah, I think I got Canelo. Even though Jacobs has bounced back from a couple little rocky fights, you know, he, he, got, he got it together. Got the belt, you know, holding it down. But I think Canelo, I mean, in his division right now, he's not really, you know. Okay. If Jacobs don't beat him, I really think Canelo's about to be, you know, washing dudes in his in his weight class. So, you know, Canelo is one of the people that was up, when we was talking about off the air, one of the unofficial list for uh, fighters of the decade. So, right. you know. He's just the, one of the greatest fighters that we've seen in the last 10 years, period. He's probably Young boxing legend, biggest so. star right now. I think Canelo's probably boxing biggest star right now. After the after the Triple G fights, you know, I think Canelo's the biggest star in boxing. And the thing that I'm a little bit disappointed with this fight, fellas, is that Canelo nor Jacobs do a lot of shit talking. So we ain't going to get a lot nope. of – we're not going to get a lot of trash talking or build up. Um for this fight I think it's yeah, gonna have to sell itself no pre-fight antics over this yeah it's gonna no have to sell itself antics. it's gonna be crazy now um, Canelo he's 51 1 and 2 35 knockouts um, Jacobs is 35 and 2 29 knockouts uh, Jacobs is out in Bro- out from Brooklyn 32 years old Canelo is 28 so uh, Canelo definitely has the advantage J.O. who you picking between Canelo and, and Jacobs on May 4th for the uh, middleweight champ- unification championship. I'm going with Canelo, although Jacobs has the size and reach. And he, and he like he's, uh, he got the physical ability to, to take it to uh, Canelo. But uh, I think Canelo, he's in his prime. He's, he's carrying the sport. Uh, like you mentioned, he is the, the biggest draw. Well, I don't know if he's the biggest draw. Well, we don't know what what Mayweather doing. I think Mayweather didn't give him another rematch. I disagree fight, with the but, biggest draw, but yeah, yeah, yeah not that. I don't know about that, but um, he's he's definitely carrying the sport at this moment. He's keeping everybody uh, interested. Uh, you know, you know, he got Mexico behind him, so that's that's a big market. So, what do you think about? I got Canelo winning. Man. Now, what about the the drug um, suspension because of the uh, positive testing, Jo, with Canelo? What, you you think that's behind them? You think those demons can resurface? It may can resurface, but the fans typically don't care about PEDs in boxing as they would in other sport. But um, I don't know, man. I guess he's trying to keep his weight up. I, I don't know if he's having trouble making weight or. or I think Canelo usually arrives big, but pause. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think Canelo got it, man. I think Canelo got it. I'm, I'm going with the upset, yeah. fellas. I'm a sh- we gonna see how Brooklyn do May the fourth, man. I'm going with Jacobs to upset Canelo Alvarez. Oh, I've seen I've what? seen Canelo I've seen Canelo drop the ball on the biggest moments. Let's be clear, he dropped the ball. He got re- Floyd manhandled him, uh, Triple G embarrassed him. We just talked about you know the positive drug test. You know he should be favored in this fight. But this is a big moment. He was young when he fought Floyd. So he was young when he fought Floyd. You, you, you man, think he could be? Was, wait a minute. Floyd wouldn't. He wouldn't fight him again. Floyd would never fight Canelo again. Floyd would turn that fight down in a heartbeat. 
Of course. Yeah, Look how old Floyd is. But Floyd. <laughs> yeah, smoke his boot. We're not going to sit up here and disrespect me, Floyd he Money Mayweather want, like he that. He don't want that. Y'all are so disrespectful. Man, Floyd pick. Man, look, and Canelo is not, man, you too many, them young dudes down a couple way clear. I'm, I'd be, when I think about boxing and the people, I get excited about the Keith Thurmans, the Errol Spence, the, the Terrence Crawfords, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the Sean Porters. KB. I don't be I don't be checking for Canelo like that because, you know, Canelo, all he's going to do is there's nobody in his, he's going to dominate his, his division right now. He's going to dominate it because there's nobody there. As long as you he not is the big name. Triple G is old. Triple G gonna fight for two more years. They not gonna fight again. There's no point for them to fight again either. And I hope they don't. And Canelo's gonna go uncontested for almost the rest of his career until somebody up and coming and tries to get him. We not doing no Floyd Mayweather disrespect. I, I want to get that point across for both of y'all. We're not doing no Floyd Mayweather disrespect. Nah. This is the this is TBE. Nah, we got let's uh. Man, that we could save the Floyd disrespect for another day, but I got some Floyd disrespect for you. <laughs> oh, you got some in the bag. I got bag. plenty. <laughs> I got some Floyd disrespect for you. Oh. So Floyd, Mr. I, Mr. I choose you. <laughs> nah, nobody, nobody trying to hit that, man. Come on, man. My man, is a, my man is a genius. But that's for another day, man. This is the best of seven sports talk. T7N Radio, man. Seven Mitchell, J-O-K-B, man. We about to get up out of here, man. If you guys are on our YouTube channel, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, T7N Radio. We also um, stream at every show of the podcast on SoundCloud. Check out T7N Radio on SoundCloud, man. We definitely appreciate all the support. Like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all let us know what y'all think about today's topics. We're back at it live every Tuesday and Thursday. 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 516-666-8432. Here on the Best of 77 on Radio, man. I'm Seven Mitchell. Salute the JOKB, fellas. Y'all got any final thoughts before we get out of here? You know what it is, man. Shout out to the listeners, man. Shout out to everybody who give, out here giving us an ear to listen to what we got to talk about, man. I appreciate y'all. Already know. Yo, shout out. That's a shout out to the Lakers not making the playoffs. Man. Oh, and that's, what, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, no, I'm we can't go up there with, with salt. You we know what? I'm, salt. I'm glad you brought that up because it was something that I wanted to talk to y'all about. The Los Angeles Lakers and free agent Carmelo Anthony, they pause in talks on a possible contract agreement unless the franchise make a turn back turnaround for the playoffs. Now, I forgot about Melo. What's, in reality, what do y'all think about Melo joining the Lakers possibly be for this you know or for this playoff run no Melo is done Melo needs to do what need to do what the league was trying to force him to do trying to force him into retirement he's still in money all he doing is keep getting these checks too Melo's trying to be the next Vince Carter out here I'm telling you wow. Melo don't want to average them a couple points a game you know it's sad like because they used to love Melo man Melo the Knicks was my team on 2k even though I'm a Lakers fan, Melo used to be that man on uh, 2K with the Knicks. What but about you, J.O.? Ever since he got traded, the Melo curse is real. What about you, J.O.? What you think about Melo and the Lakers? Well, they, Melo, I mean, it can't go any worse for the Lakers. I mean, why not? Well, I mean, why not try to strike something in the bottle? So, I don't think Melo's done. I think... I think Melo can play another few years, to be honest with you, at a uh, good level. So I don't know what's taking them so long. I thought I think they thought the AD trade would, would happen. They could just just bring Melo in, but they not making the playoffs, man. It's, you it's get Melo, you go into the yeah. NBA Finals. Period. Get Melo, we go into the Finals. Period. Period. <laughs> no sir. Period. No, sir. no debating. Get Melo. We going nah. on. LeBron and Carmelo, this is always <laughs> this has always been a match made in heaven, man. We've always needed to see LeBron and Carmelo. I don't care how many years they've been in the league. Get it done. Lakers are going to the finals, man. Period. 